see Noah Burnett set to kick it for Carolina. Pitt's kickoff return unit's been averaging about 13 yards. They've tried a handful of guys this season. 13th in the ACC. Burnett hangs it high, and this is going to be Hammond off the six. Tries for the middle of the field and will not make the 25 before Carolina stops him after a 16-yard return. And here's Scottsdale, Arizona senior Keaton Slovis making his 32nd collegiate start tonight. And you mentioned his 32nd collegiate start. He's got a lot of experience. He's got talent as well. And this season's probably been a little bit uneven for him. Obviously missed some time because of a concussion. And with five touchdown passes and five interceptions on the season, I think the message is, hey, let's protect him better to allow him to play better for this pit offense. Pitt's going to open with three receivers and a tight end. Jared Wayne to the boundary. Kanate Mumfield and Bub Means who we weren't sure about until he warmed up tonight in the slot. And there's a throw on the perimeter, and that is Bob Means, who started his career originally at Tennessee as a defensive back, went to Louisiana Tech as a wide receiver, and now in his third school is a wide receiver for Pat Narduzzi, and Storm Duck angles him out after a six-yard catch. Well, I think why that's interesting, Wes, is because, you know, with Means available, you know, just the, the receiver position in general, they're looking for guys to kind of step up, have some opportunity, Means, they thought was maybe going to be able to go last week was not. And catches the first pass of the game. Second down four and on the perimeter Vincent Davis can't hang on to it and it's ruled incomplete. Got to play to the whistle on balls like that Tim Carolina does that promptly Pitt also stayed with it with Vincent Davis till they heard the whistle. Yeah certainly the right thing to do was a forward pass ruled correctly by the officials and you know, now a very manageable third down, which again, I, I think when you look at this offense, it's tendency to want to run the football. Third and four, Wes, I do think run and pass both still in play with Pittsburgh. Slovis looking downfield for Means, who makes the catch at the Carolina 35. DeAndre Boykins, who had the game ceiling interception at Miami, makes the stop. It's a really nice throw by Keaton Slovis. It's a high angle corner by Means. Inside release, which makes it difficult sometimes for the quarterback to really assess the angle on Boykins, but it's a really well thrown ball. Enough air underneath it for Means to be able to find it. And it's a good third down completion to start the game for Keaton Slovis. 40 yard throw. Bob Means has been a factor here, hadn't he? First two completions from Slovis. Go to the Louisiana Tech transfer. In Carolina territory, Slovis throwing again. That's Wayne the catch. Second leading receiver now tying Kanate Mumfield with 26 catches on the year is a nine yard pickup there on first down. So that's, Tim, if I'm counting, it's four straight throws <laughs> by Pitt to kind of break the cycle a little bit. Hey, right after the Open, we're talking about Abanacanda having over 30 carries in that Virginia Tech game. Look, it's an area that has been attacked for North Carolina defensively. The cornerback play, you know, has definitely been something that's been a concern and certainly what Pitt is attacking early. Pistol set for Slovis. He's got Abanacanda in the barrel with him. And here's Israel's first carry of the night. He's got the first down inside the 15 to the 13 yard line a nine yard run for the ACC and nation's fourth best rusher. And you think about this start now now you've been it looks like Keaton Slovis is killing a play which maybe you know they call two plays have one kill it to the second one that second play is a run to a Banacanda that picks up another first down. He's got five 100 yard games this year six in his career and as Tim told you 320 and six touchdowns against Virginia Tech. First and 10 just outside the Tar Heel 13. Slovis airmails one through the uprights. It was Mumfield who was the intended receiver. Tony Grimes, the Carolina corner in coverage. Yeah, and it's a good decision by Slovis. You know, a week ago, get into scoring territory, throws an interception. Here, doesn't like what he sees, a little bit of pressure. Go ahead on first down, throw it out of bounds. And with the way this offense has been going, second and ten is not all that bad. Pitt has three turnovers 
in 25 red zone possessions this year. They have scored 15 touchdowns for Pat Narduzzi and Frank Signetti Jr., the offensive coordinator. They're ninth in the ACC. Wildcat for the first time tonight. Three tight ends on the field for Banacanda. Direct snap to the left side. And he will get brought down at the six. Seven-yard run. It'll be third and short for Pittsburgh. Yeah, and here's what's interesting. We're calling it Wildcat, but oddly enough, you know, they're not two backs in the backfield. Yeah. I mean, this is, uh, hey, we're, we're just making you line up and, and understand you're going to get a mouthful of our offensive line and tight ends, and Israel Abanacanda is going to be the ball carrier. Matt Gonzalez starts at the left tackle spot tonight. It's been a little bit of a mix match for Pat Narduzzi and Dave Borbley, who does a terrific job in their offensive line work. That's Wayne in motion. Abanacanda will shake free and score. Pit on the board on the game's opening possession on a six-yard run, and Israel Abanacanda's 14th touchdown of the year. And, you know, we talk a lot about Abanacanda's speed, but Kevin Hester, who's at 305 pounds, you know, he basically has a chance to, to tackle Abanacanda, but it's his power to break that tackle and punch it in. And that, Wes, was a really impressive drive by Pitt offensively. A couple of early free access throws, big third down conversion, and then finish it off with your talented running back. Eight plays, 77 yards, 325. The extra point from Sauls. So it's 7-0, Tim. And it's 7-0 because Pitt offensively came ready to play. Keaton Slovis, big third down throw to Bub Means. And then Israel Abanacanda, who's been the star of their offense, running with some power as Pitt goes up early. The identity of Pitt offensively certainly been running the football. Not that they haven't tried to throw it. They certainly have. But to open up that way was a surprise, especially with some of the struggles defending the run for the Tar Heels. No return for the Tar Heels on the kick. And now we get to see Drake May. Leads all of FBS at 180 yards a game in total offense. He's had 40 plays of 20 or more this year, yards. That's second in the football bowl subdivision. And here's the one that catches your eye. Responsible for 27 touchdowns. Second most by an ACC player through seven games to Lamar Jackson, who had 34 in 2016. Well, when, when that's who you're, they're comparing it to, West tells you a little something. Yep. Caleb Hood in the backfield. Here's a swing route, and that's Kamari Morales, the tight end, on a little release into the boundary, and A.J. Woods knocks him out of bounds after seven. Carolina's got three terrific tight ends. They do, and the quick passing game, not necessarily, you know, the bread and butter of what Carolina does, but I do think they're going to have to do more of it than typical against this pit front. Downs in motion, first carry of the night for Caleb Hood, and he will lose three yards on the play. Servassier Dennis and Deslin Alexander. Out well, of Papado Beach, the stop. Yeah, and here's the deal. You better block this guy, Servassier Dennis, because he just shoots this gap here, diagnoses it, and the double team doesn't get to the second level. And if you let number seven play in your backfield all night, that'll be a problem. Carolina hits 50% on third down against the ACC. Pittsburgh allowing opponents only 28% in conference play. Here's May running with it to the left side, and he got tripped up. And it was Dennis that reached in and I think got a piece of his lower leg to uh, take him off balance. So it'll be third and a full two here. Or fourth and a full two, sorry. Yeah, and because of that, you know, we'll, I'm sure it'll come up tonight about North Carolina's aggressiveness on fourth downs. But obviously backed up here, not getting a first down. Start this out, not the start that that Phil Longo and Mac Brown wanted. And, and honestly, West three and outs with the tempo that they play has, I think, been a problem, especially early in the season for Carolina. Five minutes into the first, here's Ben Kiernan's punt toward MJ Devonshire. And Devonshire touches it, scoops it up inside the 15. And he will be tracked down and dropped. Elijah Green, the running back, with a terrific play in punt cover. It's a terrific play because it was a low line drive punt, Wes, and Devonshire decides to try to field it, probably because he thinks he has time. But it's just the hustle and speed of Elijah Green, who is arguably the fastest running back in the that plays in the Tar Heel backfield. And 
Fast enough to just get that shoelace of Devonshire. Son of the former NFL player, Victor Green. And I think Pat Narduzzi's talking to Devonshire about, hey, when that hits, might want to let that one go and quit trying to put the pin back in the grenade a little bit. So here's Slovis just outside his five and the Panther offense that had the touchdown a moment ago. Slovis the fumble of it. Deep in the end zone. Going to sail it into the Panther bench area. Speaking of putting a pin back in the grenade. Here. I mean, what a disaster this could have been. He just actually just drops the snap, actually catches it, and then just slips out of his hands. Fortunately, it kind of bounces back up to him. And you know, one of the things you tell quarterbacks is don't make a bad situation worse. And it's a good job of Slovis at that point, just getting rid of it, living to fight another down. Demis feels kind of big early in the game, doesn't it? I mean, Pitt driving the field, scoring, Carolina going three and out. And then in two plays that probably kind of take your breath away if you're a Pitt fan, the ball security. Two tight ends to the right. Slovis looking to take a deep shot for Wayne and overthrown with Tony Grimes in coverage. They try to dial up the 6-3 Jared Wayne. Yeah, and it's clear, and I thought Slovis nearly dropped this one as well. Watch this. Catches it, but kind of juggles it a bit. Now he's able to get it and looked like he gave Wayne a chance. I thought Wayne kind of misjudged that football, gathered and tried to go up to catch it rather than continuing to stay on the go route and fight for it a little further down the field. Three receivers, a tight end, and a Banacanda for Slovis and Pitt on third and the full 10. Straight drop, flush to his right. And it is complete on the far sideline, and that's Kanate Mumfield, but he's going to be a couple of yards shy of the first down. Storm Duck to cover. Carolina sends Pitt to the side with three and out. Well, and I think that, you know, for Carolina defensively, that's a great stop because what we saw from North Carolina early in the season would be that the offense would have a quick three and out. And you think about what the defense just defended, an eight-play drive that marched right down the field. So the fact that they were able to get their own three and out and give Drake May another shot is unique for them. Josh Downs with the signal for the fair catch off the Cam guest punt. Carolina starts it at 41 when we continue from Chapel Hill. Four quarters wasn't enough. Pick it, throws, caught. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. That rain gets picked up since that pit touchdown. Here comes the game for North Carolina. Throws it up. Ball game. Pitt gets the win in overtime. Well, Matt Barry, Roddy Jones on a Thursday night in the rain. And really, Carolina's undefeated against Pitt at Keenan Stadium. But Tim, the last 10 <laughs> meetings? Good heavens. Let's hope that continues, that we got a good one here again tonight. Got to love Roddy on that sound like in the rain picked up considerably. Yeah. Well, one of the running jokes about that Thursday night game was that it rained hard on Carolina in overtime and not on Pitt. Play fake by May. Baldonado gave chase. He slides it on the perimeter and the catch is made. And that's Caleb Hood getting to the 44. It'll be a gain of three. Brandon Hill, a sliding tackle of Hood. And well, Caleb Hood quickly to the bench area. And that's. Unfortunately, been kind of his storyline here recently. Well, and it is a storyline, Wes, because it's been left shoulder, and he kind of lands on it awkwardly. And Hood has been the most productive back since they've kind of whittled that position down in terms of who's getting playing time. Elijah Green with a little pop through the middle of the Pittsburgh line. Kamara that stop, but it's a first down on the ground. Yeah, so look at Hood's left shoulder is what's been bothering him, and Kind of lands on it there and obviously gets up slowly and still in some discomfort. You know, Elijah Green, who you know, he started to kind of earn some of his own reps, looked pretty good on that first carry. Yep. That's Morales, the tight end in motion. First and 10. Here's May, another quick throw on the perimeter. First catch of the night for Antoine Green. A.J. Woods shoved him out of bounds, but in pit territory at the 41. Eight yard throw on first down for May. And plays like that are one of the things that have impressed me about Drake May. At his size, you know, sometimes, especially young quarterbacks his size, they're kind of long and deliberate. He's got a suddenness and a quickness 
to getting the ball out sometimes that you wouldn't typically see with someone his size. Here's another quick throw. Copenhaver, the catch. No catches in the last two games. He had two for 35 when you saw him beat Virginia Tech here, Tim. That time he converts a first down for Carolina. Well, the tight ends have definitely become more part of the plan. And I think it's probably a general sense of knowing the offense, you know, and, and guys being able to play different spots and, and certainly talent at the position. Green in the gun with May here. Play fake. Drake going to take a shot. That's Downs in the end zone. And Hill was contesting, and flags come down. Pass interference. Defense number nine. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Josh Downs does a pretty good job of slowing down enough to draw the contact. And Brandon Hill just... You know, he's trying to read the eyes and hands of Downs just kind of at the, the last minute, ends up contacting him too early. I actually thought May was going to work an out route to the top to J.J. Jones, but certainly get Downs running down the field. May likes that opportunity. Jones and Downs to the left, Green to the right. Here's another shot to Kop Copenhaver, who keeps his feet and draws closer to a Carolina first down at the pit 12 eight yard throw and look at the red zone numbers for drake may tim yeah i mean look he's been such a weapon i mean the three rushes have been part of it just making good decisions for young quarterbacks you don't typically do that that's why i think a lot of people feel like he's ahead of schedule in terms of how he's played in his first year as a starter a couple of catches for copenhaver on the drive pit bringing pressure may in trouble slips it to green elijah green will Gather to the 11, Servassier Dennis tackles him. And Carolina a yard short of a first down. This is just a really good play to stay on schedule. Pressure up front. We know the front's going to be a problem for Carolina. Good pressure by Cansey and may able to get the ball out. And Green on the carry, but this ball's got to be at the 10-yard line to convert the first down. Baldonado, the first guy in a yellow helmet. Yeah, and it looks short of that 10-yard line, but I would not be surprised to see Mac Brown go for it. Quarterback sneak in play. May reroutes to the left side and will have the first down. Carolina now seven of eight on fourth down against ACC opponents and now four of five in the last two games and change. Yeah, and that is a really important statistic because it's been a philosophy of Mac Brown's with the way scoring is, how hard it is to stop people to go for more on fourth down and good job of sifting through it by Drake May. Here's May from the pocket in trouble. He'll be sacked. Deslin Alexander takes Drake May down a loss of eight. And I think May missed a couple here. I believe it was Green in the back of the end zone. You see three in the back of the end zone. He's open. Downs comes open as well. And I just think May is trying to work the rail route to the tight end coming across. So to get to three and four in the progression just took too long facing this good pass rush. Downs in motion. Second down, going to throw for the end zone. And Green! Touchdown, Carolina! Well, they get off schedule, Wes, and it doesn't matter because that is a beautiful throw by Drake May to Antoine Green, who has changed this offense back in the lineup, and that is a one-handed catch as he's hand-fighting with A.J. Woods. Perfect throw, great grab. Twenty-fifth touchdown pass of the year for May. Fifth catch of the season for Antoine Green. Pittsburgh struck first, but Carolina decides to punch back, and it's Drake May with a beautiful throw to Antoine Green with the one-handed grab. We're all tied up. Terrific crowd on a Saturday night in Chapel Hill. Short kick, Rodney Hammond off the five. And he will re-
reach the 24 before he's covered up by the Tar Heels. And a pit offense that went three and out in its second possession after driving 77 yards in eight plays, but most of it in the air on their opening possession for the touchdown. Yeah, really impressive first drive, and then it's kind of an odd second drive because you know, they had some bad field position, and then you know, kind of a wasted first play you know, as the ball was, was fumbled in the backfield. We'll see if they get back to more of what we saw first time they took the field. Vincent Davis has come out here in a bunch look to the left and Abanacanda stays with Slovis in the gun. That's Davis in motion and Abanacanda to the left. Grimes crashes down tries to make the stop but Israel Abanacanda from Abraham Lincoln High School in Brooklyn gets nine on first down. And Wes you, you mentioned the personnel groupings two backs on the field. I think part of it for Pitt is you know when they play Abanacanda with another back look what they want to do is is be able to basically say, look, you're not going to know we're going to when we're running Wildcat, and how are you treating these guys? And I think with communication being an issue for Carolina, we're going to see shifts in motions and a bunch of different personnel groupings from Frank Signetti's offense. Two tights to the left, kind of a power set with a Banacanda. Slovis going to take a shot on second and short. Wayne. Couldn't reach all the way back, and it might have been deflected on the way by the linebacker Power Eccles. Yeah, I think it's a great play by Power Eccles. Good hard play action. Take a shot down the field. It's a dagger concept. Inside guy runs a post, and then an in cut coming underneath. But you look at Eccles, it's just, just enough to get in the throwing lane, get a piece of that football to redirect it. Has anybody ever meant to play linebacker named Power? Yeah, come on, right? Third and short. Banacanda will break the 34, and that's enough for the first down, I believe. Travis Shaw, big 355 pound freshman from Greensboro's Grimsley High School. The tackle, there's a look at Shaw, who they're very excited about. And when we were talking to, to Gene Chizik about Travis Shaw, just kind of stopped and said, he is a large human. Yes. <laughs> the description was large human. Wildcat here with two backs, Tim, on first and ten. Hammond will give it to Anaconda. Trying to get to the perimeter, and Cedric Gray runs him down. Legend Cavazos was there as well. Six in the blue for Carolina, no game. And here's the thing, you know, with Wildcat, which was certainly part of the plan a week ago offensively against, against Louisville, it's been a part of the plan so far tonight. You know, UNC is lining up basically in zero coverage when they see the Wildcat, which would lead me to believe there's going to be something off of it in terms of throwing the football, whether it's with Slovis or somebody else, because you're going to have opportunity. Play fake by Slovis. Trying to get there was Eccles. Deep shot for Wayne, who comes back and makes a heck of a catch. Nope, dropped it. Ball popped out at the Tar Heel 20 when it looked like Jared Wayne had been able to gather a long one from Keaton Slovis. Yeah, again, it's hard play action, and it's just a deep post from the left side of Slovis. And you see the angle he takes. Slovis kind of bends him flat, and... That's a catchable ball for sure. And Wayne, who really I, I think is a good hand catcher, big, you know, tall physical receiver, gets beyond the defense and just drops that one, which would have been a huge play for the pit offense. Carolina jumps into a dime look here on third and the full 10. Slovis. Shoots it and off the hands of the intended receiver, and that was Miles Austin. You know, and Austin, you know, not, doesn't play a ton of snaps, maybe on the field because just had a long route run by Jared Wayne, and so he comes off, and that is not a good sign for Carolina. Noah Taylor, I think you could argue he's been their best defensive player this season. Also been a leader for them, knows a lot of football, and it's a bad sign. Six plays and a punt. And Cam Guest, there's now flags thrown 
as the ball goes sailing out of bounds. Not a great punt by Guess, but the markers are down, and Cam Guess is hurt, the pit punter. You know, when Guess is a new punter yep. for Pitt, punted last week, punted, you know, punting again this week, and I mean, that looks like running into. Running into the kicker. Receiving team, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Now the question here is, Cam Guess, as you said, appearing in his second college game tonight, a walk-on from Belvernon, PA. Sam Vanderhaar is a true freshman from Australia who is also in the punting competition two weeks ago that rewarded Guess with the start last Saturday night at Louisville. Yeah, and I think they haven't loved, you know, the punting game. I'm going to go back to Noah Taylor. I think this is significant as well. Just rushing the passer here, and, you know, that is not a good sign because I'm going to say it's non-contact, but it's certainly he's trying to bull rush. Something gave way, and he's still limping around. Caleb Junko, who kicks off and punts, will fire it downfield on the punt to Downs. There are flags at around the 38 of Pitt, so hold the phone here. Jeff Heiser is our referee tonight. It's a good pump, by the way. Yeah, for Caleb for, Junko. <laughs> yeah. Probably not warming up much to punt. Holding. Holding. Receiving team during the kick. Penley is half the distance to the goal. First down. So with 2.07 to go, Carolina gets it back, Kelsey. Well, guys, the bad news for Carolina is Caleb Hood just made his way into the locker room. I'm told that he is done for the day. Offensive coordinator Phil Longo, one of the things that he told us this week was their priority was trying to keep him healthy. Obviously saw him go down on that play and get hurt early. He's a guy who really taken the opportunity when they challenged these running backs to step up. They liked what they had seen from him. He is done for the day. And I'll keep an eye on Noah Taylor. He just went into the tent as well. All right, Kelsey, thank you. And Tim, it goes back to our conversation yesterday with the Carolina staff about the depth at that position in particular well running back has been a a definitely a position of strength they played a lot of guys early and certainly narrowed it down ball on the eight here's green trying to turn the corner and my goodness Deslin alexander fights through space to make another terrific play for pitt well it's fun watching him five in the white come off the edge yeah good pursuit by him i'm surprised carolina going with the speed option pitching yeah. it backed up like that Two by two look here for May. With time, shoots it to Green. Terrific catch right in front of MJ Devonshire and a Tar Heel first down at Carolina's 22. Yeah, and how about Elijah Green comes into the game at running back and you end up getting, you know, pressure up the middle. Just go ahead and stone Savassier Dennis coming up through the A gap. That's well done by Elijah Green. Play fake by May in the pocket, firing for downs. I think he got hit as he cut it loose. The ball was nowhere close to being caught. Servassier Dennis peeling through the Carolina front to affect May's delivery of the football. And that's really the, the challenge and not a good sign for the Tar Heels, as we said. And, you know, it's there's going to be receivers that have space down the field for Carolina because there's, you know, coverage that essentially, whether it's Quarters coverage, it, it amounts to one-on-one -on -one opportunities down the field with how aggressive Pitt plays, but they also are aggressive to the quarterback. May's first incompletion in nine tries. Out in the backfield, this is Downs. Slips and is able to get back to the original line. No gain. It'll be third in the full 10 off the Tar Heel 22. And you can see how slippery Downs is. That's a nice tackle by O'Brien because... Philip O'Brien doesn't get him down. Josh Downs has got a lot of room to run. DJ Jones, who missed the Duke ball game two weeks ago, into the backfield now with May. He's almost a third down staple in what Phil Longo wants to do. May trying to elude the pressure and cannot. 
get away from Tyler Bentley. Another one of those fifth-year seniors. It's a three-yard loss on the sack by Bentley. Yeah, and Pitt, you know, kind of looks initially pre-snap that they're going to just rush three, maybe play some coverage. They end up bringing five, and you know, I think it fooled May just a bit. And ultimately what happens, he starts to climb in the pocket, kind of finds himself climbing into trouble in the hands of Tyler. In the scoring drive that opened the ball game tonight. Certainly was. Big third down throw. And I think we're going to have a ball game. You, Wes, you talked about having, you know, close matchups over you know, the last 10. Yeah. Close one so far. So here is Kiernan to punt. One step, tries to get it on the ground ahead of MJ Devonshire, who makes the play at the 29. And here's Devonshire. Already got one under his belt this year, and he'll break midfield into plus territory. Devonshire ran one back 82 yards against Rhode Island. And that one turned the corner and went 26 before he got angled out. Well, and that's a good return, and it's a good thing, because that's what happened last time out. I think Pitt, you know, after that first drive where they were on fire, have had a few miscues, but haven't really cost them. You know, Devonshire kind of muffed the punt, and then you had Slovis fumble in the end zone, and then Wayne dropped the pass. I think 7-7 seven, seven ball game, and starting this drive in plus territory. It's a good response by Devonshire, and Kind of a good job of just weathering the storm by Pitt. Slovis under center here. And Abana Kando on first down. Runs right into Miles Murphy. No gain on the play. Pick number eight at better than 300 pounds makes a stop. Yeah, Miles Murphy's a guy that I think that kind of people here have always felt like, hey, we need more. And that is a really good job of fighting through a double team and making a play at the line of scrimmage. By Murphy, you got to do that against a team that wants to run the football the way Pitt does. Boy, he discarded Blake Zabovic to make the stop. Second and ten. Three tight ends now. Play fake Slovis. Taking a deep shot for Wayne, who is ahead, and makes the catch inside the five against Storm Duck. 41 yards to Jared Wayne. Yeah, and Jared Wayne's running another post. They give him another shot at it after he dropped one earlier. And with no post high safety, he's wide open. Ball actually slows him down a little bit, but he has Storm Duck beaten so badly that he's able to kind of gather himself and go up for the football. So Pitt gets their second red zone possession. In their fourth possession of this first half and a chance to regain the lead. First and goal at the Tar Heel four. Abana Kanda takes on a blocker and scores. And a flag has been thrown as Izzy crossed the goal line. And let's see what Jeff Heaser has for us on the penalty. After the play, personal foul, face mask, defense number 10. That penalty be assessed on the succeeding kickoff. Touchdown. Abana Kanda's got his second of the night and the 15th of the year. And he just hits this one downhill, Wes, and the guys up front just do a great job of getting movement. Certainly the offensive line, but also the tight end group. So here is Sauls. And the kick is good, and Pitt back in front now by a touchdown. Well, they get good field position off of the punt return, and then Keaton Slovis able to hit Jared Wayne on a post. He comes down with this one, a tougher catch, and then once again, it's a band of Kanda with a physical run into the end zone. It's bow time. For Pitt offensively, and really, could be much better if Wayne catches the first post, obviously catches the second one. It'll skip along the ground. This is Elijah Green. And Green's going to push it across the 20 to about the 23. And downstairs to Kelsey with more on the Panthers, number two. Well, you guys are talking about what an impressive guy he is. And I talked to him about that six touchdown game he had. He said after the first time, he stuck with him. He says every time he scores, it's for her. He's always got his family in mind. He's not leaving mom, he's leaving everybody else this year. 
May trying to loop it down the field. A lot of contact with Woods and Antoine Green, incomplete. Carolina snuck Amari and Hampton, the true freshman, into the backfield, by the way, at the start of this possession as we see the running back card for Phil Longo get a little deeper after the injury to Caleb Hood. And I think Hampton is a similar player to Hood in terms of the type of power that he runs with and you know, maybe isn't as ready to play in terms of pass protection and you know, things you can do that way with him, but certainly been an effective runner when he's had the opportunity. Downs in the slot. Here's May, a quick throw, and that's Hampton on the perimeter, and he will fight for yardage. 35 and out to the 38 goes Amari and Hampton before A.J. Woods makes the stop. Carolina hustling to the line. And it's a good read by Drake May. The pressure comes to his right side. He throws the hot. It's Hampton, and then Hampton, like Hood, good finish to the run. And back again. The ball pops out. And let's see. Corey Gaynor, perhaps, the center. Let's see. Did he beat Baldonado to the loose change? I believe he did. And it was a pretty good reaction by the big fella because that ball popped. And, you know, centers need to have a little bit of quickness. But ball gets punched out there. That's a nice job of punching at the football. And hard to see who that was. Shane and Simon. Gaynor. Yeah. Right there. Here goes Hampton again. Or no, beg your pardon, that is uh, Green. So Elijah Green replacing Hampton. You think Mack was going to leave Hampton in after putting it on the turf like that? Yeah, you're right. My fault. <laughs> He's a, he settled the young fella down and give Elijah Green a chance. How about the Miami transfer Gainer and Baldonado crashing on a loose ball together? <laughs> Third and about a yard and a half for the Tar Heels. May has to dance a little to his right. Flag down on the play. Drake's going to throw it out of bounds and took a lick when he did. Awesome Richards might be ticketed for a hold here against uh, John Morgan. I'm a little surprised with the play call on third and one with how they were running the football. Mm. See what Jeff Heaser has. Now the question ends up being, you go ahead, you take it, make it third and 11. Right. Or do you or go ahead and say, hey, Mac has been. Holding offense number 72, 10 yard penalty, third down. Here you go. It's awesome Richards who just, I mean, you see, you can't do that. I mean, you just got him in a bear hug and then tackle him. But, you know, an interesting decision here because I think Mac Brown, even on the own side of the 50 right maybe was going for it which is maybe why the call was what it was and you know, now all of a sudden third and 11 excuse me third and 12 because you accept the penalty dj jones with may you see the three receivers to the field and now jones makes it four and made a throw and it's downs and he had a hard time slipping away brandon hill hit him right on the number at the 38 and North Carolina actually catches Pitt in a blitz, and that play actually should hit. It's a tunnel screen. Look, they're trying to – so here's the deal. Here comes pressure. Well, throwing screens to downs coming inside with offensive linemen releasing down the field, this should hit. And if they actually just end up getting really two blocks, if looks like if Ed Montalist will turn up a little bit sooner, that has a chance to go to the house. But instead, Brandon Hill is able to find his way through and make the play. Devonshire stands at the 20 to wait on Kiernan's punt. He'll flip another one over. To the 18 is Devonshire. Carolina in good pursuit. MJ again trying to clear the edge, and he will run out of room and a flag on the play. Now two flags on the play. And look, I, I think targeting may end up coming along with it on an illegal blindside block. 43-yard punt. DeAndre Boykins got downfield to cover Devonshire, but then all of a sudden the markers came flying. You know, Devonshire kind of dancing around back there, which is not what you want to do on a punt return, especially with a low kick. And then it's this illegal blindside block right there. And Personal foul, the illegal blindside block. Return team. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. 
timeout. Looks like P.J. O'Brien takes out freshman Will Hardy. We get a break in Chapel Hill. They'll mark this off. Pitt leads by a touchdown when we continue. Spicy buns. Get for the Demon Deeks. One of six turnovers in the third quarter. Keytrail Clark to the residents. I'll tell you what, eight turnovers. It was like Oprah. You get a turnover. You get a turnover. Louisville rolls. What's the tip back to you? All right, Jordan, thanks. After further review, there is a foul for targeting number 22 of Pittsburgh. This is qualified. So that is P.J. O'Brien out of the Panthers secondary. And so here's O'Brien, and then here's Hardy, 31. And, you know, he's defenseless because it's, you know, back towards his own goal line in terms of how he's going to hit him and and then it's kind of a launch up into the head and neck area and that's targeting so the ball at Pittsburgh seven O'Brien done for the rest of the ball game can play next Saturday against Syracuse first down give Rodney Hammond picks up a yard or so to the nine or just short of the ten. Cedric Gray, the linebacker. Comes in as Carolina's leading tackler. 74 stops on the year. Also leads them in interceptions. Heavy set to the right. Single back is Hammond. Play fake Slovis. Hit as he throws, caught. Streaking across the field is Jared Wayne. Panther first down at the 30-yard line, 21 yards. Yeah, look at the off coverage that Wayne gets. He's got you know, off coverage from Tony Grimes, and he just runs an in-cut, and that's a nice job of Keaton Slovis with good pass protection to stand in there and, and make the throw. Initially a good pocket, and he comes back to Wayne after starting looking to his right side to hit him on the in-cut. Rodney Hammond, Vincent Davis are both in the package here now for Pittsburgh. Davis is off the formation. First guy in that line of three to the left. Pittsburgh by a touchdown, and here goes Hammond. And he will pick up eight, almost nine before G Giovanni Biggers makes the tackle, Kelsey. Well, guys, more bad news for North Carolina's linebacker Noah Taylor is done for the day as he headed into the locker room. Looked like it was his knee. He was in so much pain. He had to stop and actually lean on the athletic training staff. He is done for the day. And we talked to coaches about Noah and what he brings. It's definitely the veteran presence that they'll miss. Their coaches said, look, he's the guy that when he comes to the sidelines, you ask him what happened, he can tell you everything and explain it to you. They'll miss him for sure on the field, guys. Yep, grad student Chris Collins, Rara Dilworth, going to factor in that depth now for Carolina, and there's a first down run by Rodney Hammond. Out to the 42, Travis Shaw the tackle. Well, and here's the deal. Noah Taylor is the best pass rusher that North Carolina has. Maybe the the smartest, most experienced player yeah. that they have. And I think because of that, because of how he worked, he was a leader for, for the Tar Heels defensively. That's a big time loss. And guys like Power Eccles and Cedric Gray gonna need to step up. Hammond comes off into the slot here, Tim. Again, that two back look. Abana Kanda stays with Slovis here on first and 10. And is he on the ground? Got spun around right at the line by Kevin Hester. Taken down for a loss of a yard. Well, this Tar Heel front is a big front. Most of the guys they play in the defensive line are up over 300 pounds, and it's just a nice job of Hester getting penetration and making a play in the backfield. Again, fighting through a double team. We've seen that a few times now, once from Miles Murphy, and then there from Kevin Hester. Hester being asked to fill the role left by the injury season ending injury to Ray Bahasek who's just a terrific player in this defensive front for Gene Chiswick. Second and 11. Slovis wanting to throw hit as he does sails for Wayne who makes the catch and Jared Wayne is tackled. 
by Cameron Kelly in Tar Heel territory down at the 30 yard line. And Carolina continues to play with nobody deep in the middle of the field. And, and by doing that, they've just opened up opportunities for post routes to come wide open. Slovis once again is targeting Wayne on a post. That's the third time that he's come free out of there. You see the 153 on 14 throws. He's averaging better than 10 in attempts here in this first half. And, that, and now he's lined up at wide receiver. Yep, Wildcats set again. Hammond and Abanacanda. Give us to Izzy. And he will rattle for a couple of yards to the Tar Heel 28. Cedric Gray to stop. And, and look at how shallow everyone's playing. Everyone's down here. That's the entire defense. And Wayne's just going to run a post right here. And there's no backside help, nothing. And so, look, I, that's a hard cover. And, and I get that you're trying to deal with, you know, teams running the football, but Slovis is kind of contacted right after that ball comes out is really looking into the secondary with no post eye safety. And they're attacking the post with Jared Wayne. Second down and eight for the Panthers. Low snap, Slovis fields it, now in trouble. Hit by Gray as he throws to the end zone, and it's incomplete. And a flag is going to be thrown on Giovanni Biggers in coverage against Jared Wayne. Question is, was the ball deflected? Was it uncatchable? Jeff Heiser. There is no foul on the play. Well, well, Wes, it's a good point by you because clearly downfield, J. Biggers just is grabbing him. I mean, that, that's way before the ball. Now, you're allowed to do that if the ball has been tipped. And so if we can go back and see that, where that ball was deflected. I think Pat Narduzzi does not think the ball was tipped. <laughs> All right, a play. He wants the play clock reset. Play clock is running down. Three to go. And we got movement by Pitt. Looked like Zabovic. Ball start. Offense number 68. Five yard penalty. Third down. And that is the fifth year senior. And so I think that, you know, Pitt was probably operating under the assumption that it was going to get beat pass interference when they obviously deemed that the ball was deflected. And so two plays ago, I mean, here back here is where this ball's coming out. And to be honest with you, it's really hard to tell. Obviously, wasn't able to get much on the football, whether it's his hand or the football that was deflected. But either way, I think Pitt was late getting up and having a play ready. Play clock winding down. They wanted it reset. They didn't get that. And now they're backed up even more. Our pagers are mistakenly going off. I'm going to confirm that there's nothing being looked at by replay. Jeff Heiser with a little piece of game management for you. A good explanation. Yep. Who knew pagers were, were still a thing, Wes? <laughs> it's really hard to tell. I mean, is, does Cedric Gray mm. touch some of that football? Yep. Or does he just kind of get Keaton Slovis' hand as he's following through? Well, Joe Ryder is the replay official, and Tyrone Anderson is the communicator tonight. And Pat Narduzzi yeah, look, take this moment yeah, to litigate just, just, for his just team. To, yeah, to <laughs> clear this up of why this matters, right? Flags are thrown for pass interference because the officials in the back, they don't know if that ball has been tipped or not. They're looking at kind of the moment of truth, you know, down the field with the ball. And I... See, here's so here's the deal. Here's the deal. Ball's coming in the air. Biggers grabs Wayne. That's pass interference. Okay. Now, if the ball has been tipped, it's not pass interference. You can essentially tackle the guy if the ball has already been tipped. And so now the question ends up being, you call on the field is clearly that the ball was tipped. That's the call on the field. I just don't know that we can see enough there are on the replay. Technical difficulties with the replay system. We will keep it on the field with both sidelines. Replay is intact, but we're having some disconnection with tech technical difficulties. Third down. So it's going to stand as an incomplete pass, not pass interference on Biggers, but the 
Yeah, and the technology. Yeah, <laughs> and, and is struggling in, in terms of replay officials in the booth being able to to tell uh, the officials on the field that they want to look at something. Which, by the way, matters. We go back to the targeting penalty with O'Brien. Right. That was buzzed down from up top to look at that. So, it is an important mechanism to have available during the game. I would just say this, Wes. I don't know that that one was going to get overturned. Yeah, I'm not sure there was enough to do so either. By the way, Bub Means is in this package here to the field with Mumfield and also Gavin Bartholomew, who's been quiet tonight. Third and long for Slovis on the perimeter. Kanate Mumfield is tackled. And in doing so, Don Chapman returning to the lineup tonight makes the play at the 29. And it's fourth down, and Ben Saul's going to be asked to try and cover the rest of this. You know, and you think about the play from Cedric Gray, which is, you know, kind of deemed deflecting the football. What a big play that ends up being for the Carolina defense. Because otherwise, we're talking about first down and probably a, a heavy dose of a Banacanda. 47 yards. Saul's made three straight, six of seven. And the kick is going to be good for Ben Saul's. One shy of his season best, and he's given Pitt a 10-point lead. Late second half in Chapel Hill. Social justice in conjunction with its member institutions have identified October 23rd through the 30th as ACC Unity Week, and as part of this initiative, members of Pitt and Carolina's team joined one another on the field before tonight's kickoff to demonstrate their commitment to seeing each other as equals treating each other with respect and dignity at all times and recognizing that our differences don't divide us but make us stronger. Field goal by Sauls has pushed the pit lead to 10 and no return for Petway. And here's Drake May in the Tar Heels. May is 11 of 13 for 79 yards. The Carolina trails 10 now with just better than five to go. I mean, you see the completion percentage. He's obviously found open guys. Well, they haven't really had many big, big plays. I mean, we're used to seeing, you know, plus 40-yard plays out of this offense. Pitt's done a nice job defensively, kind of keeping it in front of them for the most part. 11 completions to seven different guys in the first half for May. Going to throw on the run, and Downs has it skipped to his hands. So the third incompletion in 14 tries for Drake May. Yeah, and you see that Carolina wants to move the launch point some. You know, again, we've said it a couple times, but holding up against the Pittsburgh defensive line, you know, is a concern for Phil Longo. And so they want to move the pocket, move the launch point at times, and because of it, May just misfires. Carolina's longest play tonight is 16 yards. May downfield again. Antoine Green the catch. And out to the 44-yard line, which is a throw of 19 and a first down. Well, he misses one on the run, and then this one, he's trying to get downs. He comes off, he doesn't like it. He's kind of doubled inside, and he makes that throw on the run. Look at the ball doesn't die as it gets there to Green. Wanted to go to the right, now moves to his left. Now going to throw it back, and here's Antoine Green. 35, 30, 20, 15. Eric Hallett will take him out of bounds inside the 10. Drake May's ability to see this is incredible. He's working his running back to the right, doesn't like it, tries to come to the shallow cross. Then he gets all the way outside to the sideline. That's covered up and comes back to Antoine Green. You know, we said in the open, his ability to see it. It's one thing, Wes, to see it when you're in the pocket. It's another thing to see it when you're escaping, you're running, you're, you're trying to create as a runner. That's a really, really impressive play by Drake May. 50 yards. Carolina, who had a 16-yard play as their longest, has had one 19 and now 50. Both the green. First down, May, pressure coming. Eludes, throws, on the run, downs at the five. Did he hit the pylon? He did, but it's going to be ruled out of bounds inside the two. He definitely hit the pylon, Wes. The question ends up being is, 
is any part of his body outside before out of bounds? Oh, and I think call. that left foot. It's a good call. I think that left foot is out of bounds, which means that ball is going to be at the one. And Tyler Wilt, think about his speed. Yeah, left foot out of bounds. That's a nice job by the officiating crew. Left foot out of bounds, and the ball is about on the one-yard line. But but how about Tyler Wilt, who Randy Bates, the defensive coordinator for Pitt, told us is kind of like the, the Tabasco in your spaghetti, <laughs> which I think if you're running with Josh Downs in space and you're a linebacker, that might be a good way to, to describe you. You know, Tim, officiating's a hard job, right? That's a pretty good call by Jim Slayton, the line judge. It's, it's a really hard job. So Tyler Wilt. Boy, this is a terrific play by Downs. Carolina's got it. First and goal at the one when we come back. <clears throat> We're right to live action as we rejoin you from Chapel Hill. Second and goal. May going to make a quick throw, and the touchdown catch is Kobe Paisel. That's a really good play designed by Phil Longo. He actually told us in our meetings, I think there's some similarities to things we do to the Kansas City Chiefs, which, by the way, is a pretty good offense to be compared to. That's a Kansas City Chiefs inside the five-yard line play right there. That's, that's a really good job on that drive by the entire Carolina offense, but really Drake May's ability to create, Wes, that was the difference. Kobe Pesor has only had four catches in their last four games, but he's got his third touchdown catch. A little bullet from May here. Now Burnett to try and draw the Tar Heels to within three. And the point is good. So a quick check of our New York life drive recap, Tim. Well, I just said it, the ability to create Drake May moving to his left. His ability to, to find Antoine Green and then make that throw to keep him on the move and then escape outside the pocket to find Josh Downs as he nearly gets in. And then just a cool play design. It's kind of this little under screen and it's just so hard to pass off quickly as you're playing man to man coverage and then Look in college football, which makes the play even tougher to defend than it is in pro football because you can block downfield as long as the ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage. So May 4 for 5, 75 yards in his second TD, Kelsey. Well, one of the things coaches told us all week about Drake May that comes to mind when you think about him is what a competitor he is. When I talk to Drake, you can tell because I asked him, how do you think the first half of the season has gone? How would you assess it? And he says, well, we've done some good things, but I feel like I've left a lot out there. He said it's something that kind of dawned on him that he does always, even going back to when he was younger, he sees the negative because he always wants to get better. He said growing up, that's just how his family was. If I hit a home run, then what I would remember more is the strikeout that I had next. He said he's always challenging himself to get better. He's trying to find the balance, though, of appreciating where he is, but also realizing what he needs to do to get better. Mac Brown says no one's going to push themselves harder than Drake May. Rodney Hammond will watch this fly over the top off the foot of Maynard. Wes, I, I think when you think about what Kelsey was just saying about just competing, like exercising the muscle of just competing all the time, you know, that's Mac too. Mac is a guy that's just always competing. That's why he's, you know, decided to come back and continue to coach. And I think, you know, as people kind of train and specialize and do all that stuff, that's one thing. But the kind of fighting and, and, and challenging yourself in that way, growing up in that environment, was something that Mac Brown liked a lot when he was recruiting Drake Met. A Banacanda and a pistol with Slovis. All three timeouts remain for both schools. Is he going to get about three to the 28? One final note about May, and it was interesting to hear Mac Brown talk about this yesterday. Look, Mark May was a terrific player in the mid 80s in Chapel Hill. Highly thought of Parade All America at Independence High School in Charlotte. His career was derailed a little bit by an elbow injury. But Drake May comes from it honestly. Mark May was a terrific competitor. We've seen Luke May, his brother that won a College World Series at Florida. You know, it's. You're wired to win sometimes, right, Tim? There's no doubt. I mean, this kid is for sure. Abanacanda trying to get to the left. 
That will push him over a thousand yards. It'll be third and short for Pitt on the tackle by Jabari Ritzy. But Israel of Banacanda in eight games becomes the first Panther since Darren Hall to crack a thousand yards. And that was a tough physical run to reach that mark. I didn't think he had much. He ended up making something out of it. Pittsburgh tonight on third down has hit half of them, three of six. Slovis hands to Izzy. Going to get stacked up. Power Eccles led the charge for Carolina. That's a huge stop, especially when you look at the time on the clock here. You're going to give Drake May another shot. Third and one, I think Pitt probably felt pretty good, but it's Power Eccles, as you said. It's also Chris Collins, who's in the lineup for Noah Taylor. See him fighting through the double team. That's a job by the reserve outside linebacker Collins, and Power Eccles should be excited about the play he just made. Carolina burns the first of the three timeouts. And Pittsburgh at fourth and two. Now Carolina averages about 11 yards of punt return, and they've got downs back there to wait on the punt from Cam Guess, who has returned to the lineup here for Pitt as their punter. Mac Brown's talked to us a lot when we've spoken to him about kind of the, the middle eight, you know, and here we are obviously, you know, end of the first half, how critical that is. Something to consider, Wes. Two timeouts obviously still left for Carolina. Also going to get the ball to start the second half, and Drake May is about to take possession of this thing. Wobbly pump by Guest. Down's going to let that hit, and it does around the 30 and skips right out of bounds. So with 2.02 to play, Panthers aren't able to burn off much clock on the punt by Guest, and back to the table comes Drake May with two TDs on a 15 of 18 first half. And the number of different guys who've caught passes here Illegal in this first half. Offense, more than four players in the backfield. That five-yard penalty to be assessed. First down. A little bit. Pat Narduzzi kind of a what for here on the formation, so the ball will be pushed to the 36. Elijah Green with May. Antoine Green to the boundary against Woods. And Pat Narduzzi's defense sees three Tar Heels to the field, including Copenhaver, the tight end. And we got some discussion here with referee Jeff Heiser. That's Jim Slayton again, the line judge. And the headlines from Brian Perry. Involved here is two. And basically, the flag was not, not enough guys on the line of scrimmage, and seems to be a discussion about that. Right. Correction: There is no foul for an illegal formation. So back to the 31, they march. And now Mac Brown wants some information. <laughs> and then the wave off just indicates, I guess, that we're going to play on, huh? A <laughs> little bit of disgust. <laughs> Snap to May. Drake going to keep it. 35 40 went to slide and took a big lick from Cansey. And this is close. It is a first down for Carolina, but. Oh, boy. Well, listen, that is crowd and helmet by Cansey. And if Carolina goes quickly, looks like the officials are stopping it. This one's going to go to review. Under further review. So Jeff he's a replay, by the way, the system is back up and running. And this is Kalijah Cansey now. This is the of the dudes on the roster, 
This is the guy at the top of the list, Tim. Yeah, he's the best defensive lineman Pitt has. And now, just thing a note, Drake May is a runner. Now, I think that, look, you could probably talk about his slide. I think his slide happens too late. Let's just say he's a live runner and not a defenseless player. Even if that's the case, now we're looking at only crown of the helmet, which this is. And you hate to see it for Cansey, who's a tremendous football player. There's no doubt about it. And Drake May looks like he's, his hand is bleeding or something. Yeah. Because they've just pulled him off the field to have that looked at. So May is going to go into the tent. That's his right hand. Yeah. And the video boards here at Keenan Stadium are showing the Tar Heel and Panther faithful on hand here tonight. And people need to realize, like, that, like the reason this would be a, a targeting foul. Like, yes, it's to protect the, the runner in this situation. It's really to protect Kalaja Kansi. Like, that's why crown of the helmet is a targeting foul. It's actually to protect the guy yeah. who's lowering his head as much as it is the player he's contacting. And, Tim, the crown of the helmet was redrawn in the offseason by the rules committee. Here, Jeff Heiser is seeing what he needs to see. After further review, there is targeting against defense number eight. 15-yard penalty, number eight, is disqualified. So Kalijah Kansi, the redshirt junior from Miami, a midseason All-America, becomes the second pit player to be disqualified for targeting, joining P.J. O'Brien. That's a huge loss for Pitt. Phil Longo told us, he said, look, number eight's a problem. It's a problem. So Drake May he kind of puts his right hand up, and maybe that's where, you know, he was injured in terms of blood coming out. Now, Jacoby Criswell in the game at quarterback. You see May's got a little bandage around the littlest finger on the right hand, the pinky, if you will. Here is Criswell, Arkansas sophomore. Jacoby comes in and had it deflected at the line of scrimmage. Paul Donato at 6-5. Got a hand up on the throw by Criswell, which, by the way, was just his fifth attempt of the year. You know, what I didn't see after having that hand addressed, I did not see if Drake May threw any passes on the sideline, but clearly that's his right hand, and you, know, you don't have time to necessarily super glue it together, which is oftentimes what they do in a game. Looked like they patched it up. You wonder if it affects how the ball comes out of his hand. We're going to find out here. He tries to break away. That's Alexander making the stop. So now it's third and nine, and the clock moves under 90 seconds. Kelsey did confirm. Kelsey did not throw, right? No, he came straight out of the tent and actually wanted to run right back on the field, but obviously wasn't able to do that. So, Tim, you're right. He didn't throw any passes. So we'll see how that goes with that bandage. 70 seconds to go. Third and nine. May back across the middle. Catches May. Green again. And tackle made it to 38. And Carolina, here we go on fourth down. A.J. Woods, the tackle on Antoine Green. Yeah, and I think that here, you see May kind of messing with that right hand. Blood coming out of that bandage. Makes sense for them to go for it here. Got to get four. May up in the pocket, threw it just beyond the reach of Downs. Hallett was trailing Josh Downs, the intended receiver, and Carolina cashes out on Downs with 33 seconds left. It's a good job of Drake May is seeing it. He just doesn't make the throw. Run a little angle route underneath, and as the underneath coverage squats, you know, Solomon DeShields kind of levels off, and so now behind him, going to hit Josh Downs. Downs does kind of throttle out of it rather than snap it inside. And you just wonder, was it a miscommunication in terms of how hard Josh Downs was going to come out of his route, or did he just miss the throw? And you wonder if his hand had anything to do with it. A Banacanda in the backfield with Slovis. Now Pittsburgh has all three timeouts to go with 33 seconds. Slovis. 
Slovis wants to cut it loose. Tar Heels are chasing him, tried to go to Abanacanda. Carolina's Javari Ritzy was flushing Slovis from the pocket. And Wes, I've been surprised at the pressure that's been created by this defensive line. The Tar Heels look, look pit offensively playing with a bunch of experienced offensive linemen guys in their fifth year. They've really done a pretty good job for the most part this season but Carolina giving them fits. Slovis again looking to throw. Here comes Ritzy one more time off the hands of Abana Kanda incomplete. Gray was there. And it'll be third and ten. Ritzy once again was able to fight right through Cradle at center. And Zabovic at the right guard spot and into the path of what Keaton Slovis was looking for. Well, and they're fortunate. And you usually tips and overthrows turn into interceptions and Pitt somewhat fortunate there. You got to believe this one stays on the ground and probably force North Carolina to use a timeout and end up punting. 22 seconds to go in this first half, and here goes Abanacanda, and tackle will be made at the 42. Mac Brown, a quick move to get the timeout called. So 17 14 the pit lead. How about a recap on week nine Thursday night. How about MJ Morris's second half Tim that nice coming out party for MJ Morris taking over for Jack Chambers and leads them from behind and you, you guys will be in Raleigh next Saturday night for the Deacons sure Notre will. Dame beat Syracuse 41 24 pick six on the opening play of the game not how you want to start and then obviously Garrett Schrader leaves leaves the game and then the biggest upset and probably in all of college football today Wake Forest because honestly not just the fact that they lost on the road to Louisville but how it happened Wes you talk about the turnovers, something Wake typically doesn't do right the points off of turnovers you know I double take on that score yeah well and what a two weeks it's been for well what a seven days and change it's been for Scott Satterfield and the Cardinals. Well, the, 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 no doubt about that there's wow. some noise and now all of a sudden they're feeling pretty good about the last two weeks. Yeah. Guess got it away Carolina within a whisker of it down signals for the fair catch and does so with 10 seconds left. Quick final thought here on Louisville and Kelsey you know what we're talking about right Tim. Last Friday we met with the coaching staff that was talking about the team getting better. Nobody was really buying that though beyond that wall. So credit Satterfield Lance Taylor Brian Brown for a terrific piece of work here getting that team after the win at Virginia with the backup quarterback Tim <laughs> to play hard here. Hey, and keep it going. No question about that Wes and you just think back to what everyone thought about them coming into the season. You know and they kind of underperformed early but maybe overperforming late. Yeah. May will just take a knee. Carolina will get the ball to start the second half. The smallest finger on the right hand of the redshirt freshman is going to be the biggest concern in the locker room at halftime for the Tar Heels. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh got off to a touchdown advantage. And Pat Narduzzi's team leads by three. Here's Kelsey. Coach Narduzzi, a big stop there for your team on fourth down. And defensively, you guys have done some great things. What will you say? It's to on third down with a beautiful throw to Bub Means, which led to a score. And same thing here on the post route to Jared Wayne after Wayne had dropped one earlier, which would have been a big play. And then Megan May obviously striking back as well with this throw to Antoine Green and then a Patrick Mahomes type play to wow. Antoine Green once again. And so I would expect a little bit more in the second half as well as, you know, both quarterbacks have, have found ways to to find chunk plays down the field and second half underway there'll be no return for Carolina and a moment ago Kelsey with the Hall of Fame head coach of the Tar Heels. Coach Brown you told us all week that this was going to be a physical battle. What was your message to the guys about what you needed to see from them in the second half. This is exactly what we thought it was. We've got to try to do a better job with five. They're hitting him on some shots and that's hurt us. We've done a really good job of working against the running game, but when you do that and the safeties get involved, they throw it over the top. So safety's got to do a better job of working with the corners. 
offensively, we got to settle down and be us. We've missed some throws. We've missed some protections. They're blitzing us about every time. I thought we settled down the last couple of drives and did better. So now we got to go play. Start over. Heck of a game. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. And on cue, there's Josh Downs for five before Kamara makes the stop, the outside linebacker for the Panthers. I think he pretty much ironed it all out. You for know us. something? I actually was just thinking he really summed it up. They, yeah. they wanted to get guys involved in the run game, pit through it over the top. And and I do think in terms of settling things down a little bit offensively, they need to do that. May, quick throw right across the middle. This is Downs, first down Carolina. Servassier Dennis after the 12-yard throw from Drake May. I, it's hard as a quarterback to start one side and then come back the other and throw an accurate ball. But see how effortlessly May does that? Starts to his right, doesn't like it, and then kind of comes back and hits Downs right between the ones. You see Downs come out of the ball game next to wide receiver coach Lonnie Galloway. Josh missed a couple of games earlier in the season. Here's Elijah Green trying to get started. Boy, he got picked off. Was that Dennis or Kamara, 11? Ooh. You know, that is usually not a very good sign for wide receivers. Almost look like grabbing the hamstring, but yeah. probably too early to tell. Second down, nine. May going to keep it. Drake will step out and dive forward for a yard to the 45. So now it's going to be third down and eight. And Carolina is hitless tonight on five third downs. Yeah, which means that Pitt's done a really nice job. Pitt's done a good job defending the quarterback draw tonight, which that was the second down play. And now you get into these third and eights. That's tough sledding against anybody, never mind a, a defense like Pitt. Bunch look here to the right. Panthers bringing four. May to his right. Going to shoot it. Sidearm. Morales held on to it. It's ruled incomplete at the pit 44. A.J. Woods was there defensively, but Drake May trying to thread the needle. And I thought that he had a shot at it, but Morales' shin is down out of bounds before he catches that football. His feet are in, but his shin ends up getting out of bounds. You know, beforehand, I, I actually thought Drake Mays, he escaped out there. If he, he kind of was slow playing it as he got to the perimeter. Had he pushed the perimeter to become a threat as a runner, draw the defense in or at least let it sink back, there's a chance he maybe would have been able to run for it. So five plays and now punt. Devonshire will wait on the punt here of Ben Kiernan. And, boy, Woods almost got to that. And that ball will hit and be scooped up. Carolina thought for a moment that Pitt might have touched it, and they did. Oh, the Tar Heels. That's Cameron Kelly with the deflected recovery. Yeah, and you see this. Looks like Lewis, who's down there, I think it comes off of his foot. That's what I saw live, and Devonshire obviously didn't think so, but Cameron Kelly there. Let's see. It's just hard to see on that angle. The ruling on play the, is under further review. The ruling on the field awarded it to Carolina. Yeah, and I think the fact that, I mean, listen, every time that we get into these review situations, the rule on the field is critical, but. Javon Lewis. We'll see when we come back. It's the Subway Series menu. 12. Well, the ruling on the field was overturned by replay. So here is Pitt from its 17 with a three-point lead in Slovis' opening possession of the half and a throw on the perimeter to Means. And Bub Means picks up about eight on the first throw. Yeah, and we go back to this punt. It does not hit. Javon Lewis from this angle a bit confusing that maybe it did and or the angle on the left the angle on the right though it's clear that that ball does not hit Lewis and good job of the replay officials and you know been a bit of an adventure on some of these punt returns for Pitt tonight and by the way terrific camera work by our director Kyle Brown his folks showing you all the avenues of the play. 
Abana Candle on second and short, and he does not get the first down. Kevin Hester stops him after two, so it's third and a yard here. And Hester, I mean, it's not often he a defensive tackle show up as much as Hester has tonight, but that's his third big play. And you see Cowan. Also, Jacoby Cowan, a sophomore from Charlotte who transferred from Ohio State, is in there now. Remember, all the Bahasic injury caused a little shuffling in the A gap pressures that Carolina throws at you from Chiswick's defense. Third and short. Abana Kanda took a lick. Did he fall forward for enough? I think so. Gray, the tackle. Boy, got a good spot to the 27. They'll mark it toward the 28. First down pit. Well, that was a good, tough run. And just the spin out of it by Abanacanda. I mean, that's it's contact behind the yard to gain line, but does a good job of spinning off of that initial contact and falling forward. Three point game. We're early in the third here at Keenan Stadium on a Saturday night in Chapel Hill. Slovis play fake another deep shot looking for Wayne again. He caught it. Tony Grimes in coverage but Pitt hits another big throw to the Tar Heel 21. Once again Carolina not playing the post. I mean Tony Grimes in man coverage pressed. Wayne's running the post and there's there's no help anywhere. And I'm surprised that we haven't seen Carolina say look that's enough of number five running to the post wide open. It's what he's done by my count, I think four separate times tonight and the first one he dropped, but he's going off on the same route over and over again. Jared Wayne's got his third 100 yard game in his 36th game as a Panther. First and 10, Tar Heel 22. Abana Kanda to the 15, the 10, touchdown. Israel Abana Kanda, his third of the night. Well, it's a great run by Abana Kanda. It gets started when Slovis hits Jared Wayne, and then Jared Wayne was his personal escort into the end zone because after making that play down the field, Wayne runs off Storm Duck and then finishes him into the end zone. That's a good job on the entire drive by Jared Wayne, really the entire pit offense. Five plays, 83 yards, and inside three minutes, the quick strike attack of Israel Abanacanda produces his third touchdown of the night. And Saul's trying to push it back to a 10 point lead and does. Carolina ran five plays and punted on their first possession of the second half. Pitt runs five and scores a touchdown, Tim. Well, and it's Keaton Slovis again off a hard play action. Jared Wayne running to the post. Beat Storm, beat Tony Grime, and then the touchdown. It's a band of Kanda running with power and speed. 20 rushes, 20 passes, and <laughs> it's been the big play to Wayne, and it's been a band of Kanda able to punch it in, and he should be <laughs> dancing with the year that he's had. Yep. Kelsey told us about the memory wall. Wonder where the thousand yard gloves go up there. End over end, there'll be no return for the Tar Heels. Carolina from its 25, Kelsey. I can tell you there wasn't a lot of space left on those walls, but I'm sure he'll <laughs> find space. When I talked to Izzy and when I talked to his quarterback, Keaton Slovis, about Izzy, he said, look, he is a special player. But he went on to say that whole room is special. Izzy, he's got a second gear and gets to that second level more times than not. He's definitely going to be gone. The, the Offensive staff for Pitt was really talking not just about Izzy, but about all those running backs and what they bring. Izzy definitely the guy that's lightened it up so far this season, though, y'all. Well, Abraham Lincoln High School in Brooklyn's no more for Stephon Marbury and Lance Stevenson. <laughs> not the football program, but he is representing them well. And that ball offline for Downs, who was trying to square up on Eric Hallett. And if you're looking for a one on one at the highest level, Josh Downs, Eric Hallett's a pretty good place to start. It is and just weren't able to connect there. You know, they have a run play called and Pitt brings a, a pressure off of the slot and Drake Mage is not able to, to get an accurate ball to Josh Downs. Pressure again. May's got to move in the pocket. Hayes chasing him. May cuts it loose and over the top of Green, who was the closest Tar Heel and into the bench area. 
So it was Deion Hayes, Servassier Dennis. You see 50. And there comes Dennis. And you see, you know, May get stuck holding the football because he doesn't like what he sees to his left. And once you do that and start to escape, then the speed of that defense comes to get you. And third and 10 now, another third and long, West. Tough place to live against this defense. Panthers trying to build some momentum after the Abanacana touchdown with a three and out on their defense. Here's a throw, heck of a catch. That's Antoine Green at the 45. And the beauty of May, Tim, on full display there. Because he sees it, you know, he just he's looking inside to down, doesn't like it, escapes outside the pocket, and you see how quickly he gets himself organized to shoot the ball outside the numbers right on the sideline. Plenty of arm strength for sure. DJ Jones stays in the game. May now want to take another launch point shot, and Antoine Green cannot hang on to that one. Devonshire in coverage. When Green tries to one-hand that one again, that's a perfect throw by May. They're faking the wide receiver go screen and then shooting it down the field. And Devonshire kind of got it, is hooked on to Green's right arm. And so Green tries to one-hand it. And I guess he was better with his right hand than his left. So Elijah Green returns to the Tar Heel backfield for second and 10. Here goes Elijah Green trying to find some room. Dennis wrapped him up. Had some help inside from uh, Tyler Bentley, who's got a tackle behind the line tonight. Three-yard run. Carolina's got to counter the run game a little bit here, Tim. You can't live solely by the throw, can and you? You can't, and especially, you know, with this much time left. Yes, it's a 10-score game, a 10-point game, but you know, this type of time left, and you think about Elijah Cansey not in the football game, yeah, being patient with a run certainly should be part of the plan. Only 23 yards of rushing. There's a catch, and that's Gavin Blackwell. Eric Hallett to tackle on the 11th catch of the year for Blackwell, who had seven of his 10 catches coming into the ball game against FAMU and Georgia State. And it's plays like that where the stature of Drake May comes into play. I mean, he's listed at 6'4". Seeing him in person feels like he's a lot closer to 6'5", and just kind of standing in there tall, seeing it, being able to find Blackwell. Ball at the 34-yard line it was an 18-yard throw a moment ago to Blackwell. Here's May trying to keep it on the ground, and Shane Simon, the Notre Dame transfer at linebacker, the money spot in the defense for Randy Bates. Made the stop. We got a marker well off the ball. Deep in the secondary, where I think Josh Downs and Marquez Williams might have been exchanging pleasantries. Listen, there was some, I don't know if it was pushing and shoving. There's certainly some John and Josh Downs maybe reacting like it could be on him. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct against the offense number 11. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number 14. Those penalties offset. Second down. Well, I think the officials obviously with a little pushing and shoving afterwards, and I don't know that I saw a lot either way, but sometimes that happens just to They're trying to set a tone, maybe. Yeah, huh? yeah, maintain control of the game. Yeah. I really would have liked probably well, flagged on neither, but if you're going to do it, I guess go ahead and do it on both. Well, there's a lot of talk earlier in the week about physicality on pit side, and Carolina had to match it and those type things. So Jeff Heaser's crew trying to keep the peace here as we work into the third. May got to cut it loose. This is Elijah Green inside the 30. Hallett shoved him out at the 28. So it's a gain right at about six. Downs came over for a moment with Mac Brown. Of course, he stayed on the field. And in, in West, probably two down territory here. Oh, yeah. Third and four. That's Downs in the orbit. Pressure coming. May got to cut it loose. Here's Copenhaver trying to pick up a block. He'll dive inside the 30, lose a yard or two. Heck of a play by Simon. That's a really good play by Simon because, you know, again, the pressure, I think the little tight end slip is going to end up picking up the first down. Instead, it goes backwards, and 
even with them losing yardage. Here, they're, they're running a little screen here, but there's pressure inside on May. And, you know, that pressure quickly, but there's a chance that they pick it up, but pressure by Morgan, then a good job of Simon getting them down. Fourth and five, Tar Heels pull it. May looking, now to his left. Got to find some help. Got a pump, turns the corner against Dennis, and out of bounds goes Drake May by land for the first down. Well, and how about the athleticism? You know, he's been described as a deceivingly good runner. But one thing that's not deceiving is that Servassier Dennis is one of the better defensive players in this conference and in college football. And Drake May is able to beat him to the corner. That's an impressive scramble on fourth and five. Ball at the 22. Play fake to Elijah Green. Through traffic, May slips up 15. Routing to the near side, he'll be pulled down. That's Brandon Hill at the 13-yard line. It'll be a gain of nine. Hill playing in his 36th game at safety. Yeah, good decision by Drake May. Climbs in the pocket, it flashes in front of him, and you know, the only thing that probably can do better is protect himself. I'll tell you, he, he looks like he's in a fight right now. Like, he looks like he's going into round 10, and. I think it's a testament to this pit defense. Well, we'll step aside. Their shots. Ten point game. David Green injured for Pitt. You see David Green going off under his own power. That's a good sign for Pitt. But it is second and one for Carolinas. May goes to the gun with Hampton. Play fake. Drake wants to shoot it for the end zone. Downs is there. Caught it against Hallett. Touchdown, Carolina. Pretty good, huh? It's an impressive response, and you, Wes, mentioned the matchup with Eric Hallett, and listen, as good as Eric Hallett is, and he is a heck of a player, that's a tough assignment, a double move by Josh Downs working from the inside with all types of room to fade into in the back of the end zone. Burnett to try and pull Carolina to within three. Drake May saw this perfectly. The pressure coming off of the left side and he knew he had it picked up and he knew he had a double move and that's why this is so impressive. Here's the pressure off the side. Here, here's Hallett back here. Well, it's a little hitch and go, and you have room to bend him into because it's come, happening from the inside. Hallett drives on it, and then May has the time to just throw it out there and let him react to it. It's just a perfectly timed play call offensively against the defensive pressure you were getting. And I guess the trigger finger's okay. Trigger finger seems to be doing just fine. 23 of 31 now, 233 for Drake May. And, and look, it hasn't been easy because they've been getting to him. Yeah. And he's created a lot of it on his own, but he's certainly been under pressure and at times running for his life. So in just over four minutes, Carolina's trimmed it back to just a three-point pit lead. Hammond and Vincent Davis await the Tar Heel kick. And there'll be no return by Pitt. Tim, we said at the top, these were going to be, they've historically been very close in recent memory. Overtime the last two times they played. And Pitt has been, from the start tonight, trying to set a temperament offensively, maybe off character. They've run it and run it effectively with a Benacanda, but Slovis has been very good. Yeah, look, they've been balanced. You know, they've certainly made plays in the passing game, and they've made big plays in the passing game. The biggest issue is what Mac Brown talked about. It's been Keaton Slovis has done a nice job of finding Jared Wayne running down the middle of the field on these post routes and really be surprised, even though you want to stop a Benacanda, be surprised if North Carolina doesn't change something and start playing with a middle of the field safety.
Here's his 18th carry of the night. And into a fray. Izzy picks up almost five against the Tar Heels, Kelsey. Guys, Desmond Evans, North Carolina started defensive end. Looks like he may not return. He got hurt in the first quarter. Saw him go down and grab that left shoulder. So he's on the sidelines right now without a helmet. As for this defense, Mac Brown still trying to keep them really engaged. He went over to them after the last drive and said, look, you got to keep fighting. Don't put your head down. Stay confident out there. It's really the message we heard from Gene Chiswick and Mac Brown. Confidence all week. Second down, five. Just a five-man box, and now Pitt wants a timeout. Huh. Okay. First charge timeout. Pittsburgh, 30 seconds. Anything strike you there, Tim? Well, you know, for second and five, I thought that Carolina was, you know, lined up relatively soft, you know, kind of a two-high shell with the safeties and, you, know, you almost wonder if they had a shot play called and you know with Carolina not lining up aggressively which we've seen them do a bunch throughout the night because they're so concerned with stopping the run getting those safeties down and tight maybe they just said hey let's let's come out of it well the 97 and 98 final four teams there's Antoine Jameson and Vince Carter uh, colleague from ESPN and you see Armando Baycott headlining a strong returning cast for Hubert Davis's second year. Carolina a 61 point winner over Johnson C. Smith in the exhibition effort last night. Is that right? 61 points Wes. 101 to 40 was the final at Smith Center. Here's a Banacanda again from the Wildcat and he bends it back into the near sideline and stepped out of bounds. Near midfield into Carolina territory at the 49. Eccles knocked him out after 21 yards. And this has been effective tonight. You know, we're going to call a Wildcat, but it's really just direct snap because there's not another back in the backfield. There's nothing being read. It's just power football with a direct snap to a really talented back in the backfield. There is 19 carries, 100 yards tonight. Sixth time this year, seventh time in his pit career for Abanacanda. So the review is where Abanacanda stepped out. It might have been a little further back. Let's see. Looks like the 46, 46 yard line. But is he out? Foot looks see. in there. Did he hit the white at all? I'll tell you this, Carolina fans know all about how close this can get, by the way. Remember Antoine Green's game winner? Against Duke two weeks ago tonight. Yep. Thinnest of slivers. Now that. Yeah, I mean, but that's also the angle that we're, you know, we're looking at it. I just. Do you have enough? I'm not sure you do. I mean, like here, like, I don't think you could see anything. And if he was ruled to have not stepped out of bounds on the field at that point, then. To me, there's not enough, and I don't even think his foot's out of bounds from that angle to yeah. change this. And it's a difference of about five yards, by the way. But after further review, the ruling on the field stands. There we go. So the ball will be at Carolina's 49. The five yards are not taken away from Abanacanda's run. Or else we'd have to go through that statistical gymnastics of losing the hundred yards and getting it back and you know that type thing. <laughs> uh, hey Wes, if they did take five away, yeah. he was gonna get it. I his think anyway. he would get it back, yeah. <laughs> Feel fairly good about that. Heck of a talent. Too tight look here to the left. Play fake Slovis on first down. Pressure throws and a bounce pass at the feet of Bartholomew. They were looking for that post again. Carolina did a better job defending it. And Slovis made the right decision to come off of it and try to come down to his outlet, which was Bartholomew, and wasn't able to get enough on it with the pressure. But good decision by Keaton Slovis not to just throw it since it was called. Carolina yet to post a sack tonight. They've only been around Slovis a couple of times to take him off point. Second in the full 10 at the Tar Heel 49. Abanacanda trying to get left. 
Nice play in space that time, DeAndre Borkins. It's a great play by Boykins. I thought Abanacanda was getting to the corner again, and if he did, there was a lot of room to run, and it's a good job of Boykins. Look, not a big player, just 195 pounds, fighting off an offensive tackle, and then shooting his gun to get Abanacanda down. That's a really nice play. Third and nine in a three-point game with four to go in the third. Slovis spun around and sacked. Kamen Rucker. Well, you mentioned it, West. There hasn't been a ton of pressure on him in terms of getting around him, but Kamen Rucker, who, you know, was in the game probably because of Deadman Evans being out, there's just something about this guy, I'm telling you. He's not the biggest guy at 6'2", about 265. But I think he's got good pass rush moves. I feel like every time we have this defense and he's on the field, he just finds ways to make plays and be around the football, and he certainly does there on a big third down. Josh Downs will wait on the guest punt. Kind of flips it over. Downs got to get away from that. It hit Lewis. And it'll be touched up inside the 15. I think they'll put it on. He takes over again, and it's been a pretty good start to his second half. This was a great reaction on third down, and then on fourth down, using the athleticism to pick up the first down, which ultimately led to a touchdown after the scramble, which was this throw here on the double move to Josh Downs. Some. You know, when you think about the year he's had, Ooh. you talk about who people are talking about in terms of the guy who won the Heisman last year, the front runner for the Heisman right now. Let's say it, man. Drake May deserves to be talked about with that crew. There's Antoine Green out to the 40-yard line against Devonshire. 24-yard throw by May. And Carolina's on the spot for the snap. And a flag tossed here. We got procedure on the Tar Heels, maybe trying to go too fast. Ball start. Offense. Not all the players became set. First down. It's a nice throw on the in cut by Drake May coming off of the run action. And I think it's just another example of, you know, Mac Brown said it to us. Randy Bates said it to us. You know, what are the things that impress you about him? He's like, both guys said he sees it. Mm. You know, he, he sees the field so well, and that's a good example of seeing that second window to lead Antoine Green into. Eight for 153 for Antoine Green. Here's May again. Guns one for Green, who makes another catch near midfield after the penalty. Marquez Williams on the cover, second and short. And that's number four in the progression in terms of how he's reading it. He's reading a stick to his left, to Josh Downs over the middle, and then coming all the way back to Green. That's a good job. May pressured out of the pocket to his left. Kamara gives chase, and May will step out of bounds at the pit 40. This is what I mean. He's reading the flat and the stick route. Then he comes to Downs, and he comes all the way back over to Green. Like that is a full field read for a redshirt freshman. And then the very next play, He's able to outrun Kamara, who's got a lot of speed to pick up the first. Pitt is a sh guy short, and Carolina, but Corey Gaynor wants to snap it, and Baldonado came on the field to replace Dayon Hayes. May on a play fake again, going to slip it to Elijah Green. Took a big lick from Dennis at the 33. Second down coming up at about three and a half. You know, Wes impressed with these backs for Carolina because the assumption was going to be that Hood was going to be getting the snaps as we have a pit defender down. It's Baldonado. Baldonado. Yeah. Well, the crowd booing here because, you know, Haba, who played his high school ball in Florida, originally from Rome, is a terrific player, by the way, making his 39th appearance for the Panthers tonight. 
And they're checking the left leg of the big defensive end. We get another check. Remember, Cancy's been disqualified tonight for targeting. So Baldonado's here. You know, and so he he jumps and Morales is coming behind him and gives him a shove and I think he gets back up and then eventually goes down. Haba, Haba is taunting the Keenan faithful here as he leaves the field. <laughs> Embracing the <laughs> full mode of it. He went villain 100 for you, Tim, going off. <laughs> Second down. Three and a half for Carolina. Quick throw. This is Downs again against Hallett, and he will break the 30. And I think that's enough for another Carolina first down. Yeah, Ball came out fast that time. It did come out fast, and it was a zone pressure and not fooled by the zone blitz. It's, they've got to kind of drop her out in the direction of Downs. You mentioned the ball coming out fast. One of the things that happens, like, you know, between shotgun snap, receiving it, getting a good enough grip on the football to spit it out quickly, done a nice job of that tonight. Downs and Elijah Green in the backfield. That's Downs in motion. He'll take the pass. Try to cut it to the edge and pushed out of bounds. That's Devonshire inside the 15 at the 14. That's a good job of Morales in space, blocking on the perimeter in space against a defender that's smaller and quicker than you. What you don't want to do is grab, you know, be in a situation where you grab. So get enough of him, let him go. And that's all Josh Downs kind of needs in terms of. We go to the final 15 tonight. Kenyon Stadium, Chapel Hill, number 21, North Carolina, has the ball in a red zone first down. That's the Pittsburgh 14 with Tim Hasselbeck, Kelsey Riggs, West Durham. Great to have you with us tonight on ACC Network. Drake May with George Petaway in the backfield. Here's a throw. Petaway can't hold on to it. Dennis was in coverage. It'll be second down. You know, Petaway goes in the game really for a special play designed to him. It's a throwback to Petaway, and almost like he just kind of got himself turned around, like he didn't know which shoulder to look over, and trips himself up. MJ Devonshire came out of a uh, collision with JJ Jones, I think, and is still down in the end zone for Pitt. We'll step aside early in quarter four. Back after this. Football. That's J.J. Jones, by the way. Second and ten, pitch showing pressure. May from the pocket, sips it to Jones. Inside the five, taken down at the two. First and goal, Brandon Hill and Bengali Kamara were there for Pitt. And you mentioned the pressure, Wes. Another good job of blitz pickup by the offensive line. And Elijah Green to allow Drake May to get that ball out. Marquez Williams comes out. MJ Devonshire returns for Pitt. Downs and Hallett square off in the slot right here, Tim. Well, now they're going to put Woods out there. Here's May looking right side and almost picked by A.J. Woods. And look, that's a play very similar to something that they've run a few times this year. This little whip route by Downs. Start inside. And Woods was just waiting for it. Yep. He knew that was coming. And really, Carolina is fortunate that Woods wasn't able to drive on that, pick it off, and run it back. Here's Green trying to get to the right side. A stiff arm. Dennis tried to hold him up. And Elijah Green, I think, broke the plane for the Carolina touchdown. Two Panthers had a crack at him, but Green puts Carolina in front for the first time tonight. Pitt not lined up correctly defensively. They actually only have two defenders lined up outside to the trips to the right. 
a little bit of confusion, but it just ends up being a great effort by Elijah Green to break a tackle, put his hand on the ground to keep his balance, and punch the ball in. Two rushing scores last or two weeks ago at Duke. And he puts Carolina in front on his third touchdown of the year. They're going to review to see if Green was down before the ball broke the plane. You he tell us what you think at here, home here. I thought he put his right or left hand on the ground there and then still doesn't seem down and he's in there. I believe that's a touchdown. Young man from Blessed Trinity in suburban Atlanta. Tim, he was listed questionable. <laughs> Mac Brown in our Friday meeting a couple weeks ago said, well, we, we think he'll play. He's kind of coming back from an injury. He gave them a huge spark in the run game at Wallace Wade Stadium and what ended up being another come from behind win. Well, Wes, and I can tell you that <laughs> there have been plenty of backs here that earlier in the year just we're ahead of him in the depth chart. Yeah, that's I mean, true. Let's just, whether it's been DJ Jones who started the opener and Caleb Hood and Amari and Hampton and George Petaway, they're super excited about the, the true freshman who we saw just a second ago. And so they obviously feel really good about the running back room. And Elijah Green, because of the Hood injury, has played a big role tonight. Yep. So an inside of four minutes at this stands, Carolina will have taken the lead on a 10 play drive. And, and Wes, I will say it, and I don't think that it's, let me just say this, I would kick the extra point is what I'm gonna say, but what I would say, there is a thought that you go for two in this scenario to make it five, which means a field goal makes it eight, which means you won't, can't lose the game up eight if it's a one score game and you're defending it that way so there apparently is a frame by frame look here and Jeff he's our referee tonight is having a long look and you see the Mike Brown is having a discussion Elijah Green Servasi Dennis who was involved after on the further tackle. review the ruling on the field stands touchdown not enough to overturn the call on the field. And here comes Burnett for the point. So they will try and take this to a four point lead. And the kick is good. So for the first time tonight, almost a minute into the fourth, Carolina's got the lead for the first time. Well, Drake May once again just showing a lot of poise for a redshirt freshman, making a lot of good decisions and good throws, and really did see it well when they brought pressure. And then on the touchdown, some confusion getting lined up is Kind of the secondary, not sure. They actually don't cover guys out to the right. They run right into an unblocked defender in Kamara, and it's just an incredible individual effort by Elijah Green to get in the end zone. I mean, that really, that is a play that, West, that should be a two-yard loss because Kamara is in the backfield unblocked, and that's where you're running the football, right at him. But Elijah Green with an outstanding effort to get into the end zone. Well, Drake Mays had another terrific night, leading him in rushing and passing, of course. Elijah Green, though, Carolina's only got 52 yards of rushing. Mays got 33 of it, 11 carries, and you see over 300 yards with three touchdowns. And a big gash on his hand, evidently. Yeah, but it hadn't slowed down the throw game, has it? It has not. Nope. And there'll be no return here for Rodney Hammond. Pitt will scrimmage from its 25. Well, here are the last two FBS quarterbacks 
with 300 or more yards of passing per game and led their team in rushing in yards per game. Well, I'll tell you something. That's an amazing company, and you think what you want about Johnny Manziel right now, but at the college level, Ooh. he was pretty dominant, and the guy on the left, one of the best players playing in the National Football League, and this guy right here, I think does some things that can remind you of Patrick Mahomes. A banner the lone set. Three tights for Frank Signetti Jr.'s offense here to start the drive, and a banner trying to rev the engine and gets 10 on first down, or almost 10, out to the 34 before Malachi Hamrick, a true freshman from Shelby High School in just south of Charlotte, makes the play. There's a look at the youngster that had five tackles in the win against Virginia Tech. And that's a great sign for Pitt offensively for this drive to rip off a nine yard run. You have to think that just starting to wear on the front of North Carolina with this run game. Play fake by Slovis trying to find time on the backside and he will throw it into the bench area. Gavin Bartholomew and Abana Kanda were both kind of layered on that far side. Yeah, and it was a throwback. It was a throwback designed to to go to the back, basically here. So they're trying to throw it back to Abana Kanda, and Power Echoes does a good job of, of staying home, seeing it, and being there. But I think it speaks to the confidence that Pitt has in their run game. Second and one. It's the second, and second time we've seen them try to take a shot with confidence that they can get it on third and short. Get a heavy look to the right. And here goes a Banacanda first down trying to clear that level of Tar Heel defenders storm duck the tackle but not before he reaches the 41 in five yards and look that's why you take the shot on second down Wes is because you know you come back on third down you're going to hand number two the football and and get a good push by your offensive line. Jared Wayne, the only receiver in the set here for Pitt. Top of your screen. Abanacanda trying to slither to the right. And looked like again that Cayman Rucker got in there to make the play with Duck, three yards. You know, you mentioned, you know, Wayne was the only receiver in the mm. personnel grouping on the previous play. It was now switched it out, but Pitt can do that. They can put big guys in and just say, look, we're going to play bully ball. We're, we're really going to just, you're going to know what we're doing and we're coming right at you with it. And I don't think it'll be the last time we see that grouping out on the field. Here's a Banacanda trying to get left now. He tries to hit the cutback and gets to midfield. And here we go with third and about a yard and a half. Cedric Gray, the tackle. Tim, the thing that catches you about a Banacanda gets stronger as the game goes, too. But look at 215 pounds and a lot of speed. It's if you look at Frank Signetti Jr. who's calling the plays as the offensive coordinator for Pitt. And look, he's not afraid to dial up runs and he does a good job with using the tight ends to to create an extra gap. And you know, it's a challenge that Gene Chizik has facing this group. Third and short. Abana Kanda straight on knocked down ball loose. Right around the 48 and a half yard line. Tony Grimes came out and said Carolina has it and they do. Cedric Gray. Well, a band of Canada just gets it punched out and it's Cayman Rucker, you know, who makes the initial contact and then Cedric Gray punches it and I believe Power Eccles. Maybe even Gray. Yeah, it is Gray who comes up with it. I know I said it earlier. And he's not listed as a starter, but every game I feel like I've watched where Cayman Rucker gets snaps, he makes plays. Injured Tar Heel on the field will check it during the timeout. Four point lead in the ball for Carolina next.
Joe Biden drove America into a recession. And Sherry Beasley still won't change a thing. Everything costs too much. And the Biden-Beasley solution is hiring a stadium full of IRS agents to harass as many of you as possible. Their fixes keep making things worse. I'm Ted Budd, the only candidate for Senate who will stop Joe Biden, defund those IRS agents, and get our country back on the right track. I'm Ted Budd, and I approve this message. Spicy buns. Point lead. And the beneficiary of plus territory start here, Tim, at the 49. Downs coming out of the backfield. May gets it to him. He'll turn the corner at the 40 and shoved out of bounds by Hallett, but not before he reaches the 34-yard line of Pittsburgh. And again, Pitt brings pressure. They throw the little bubble or wide screen to Downs, and you know, you kind of just a well-timed play call, and then you get a great player playing in space on the edge. May the pump, trying to escape. And he will dip inside the 30 and then got shoved out of bounds near the 25. So we'll see where they spot that. Drake May, by the way, career high number in attempts and completions. 30 of 40 for 324. There is a flag across the way. Back toward the 36 in front of the pit bench. Offside defense that penalty is declined second down. There's the 30 of 40 and three scores tonight for May. I mean season high in completions and attempts they've relied on him in a big way. You know they're usually good at running the football at least getting chunk plays in the run game. Has not really happened for them with the backs and so they've relied on the right arm of Drake May. Second and short. May again wants to throw for the end zone. There's Downs. Touchdown, Carolina. Hallett fell down, and Josh Downs has got his second TD catch. Listen, it's a great job of just being reactionary. They're faking the wide screen again that they ran earlier in the drive and then trying to shoot it down the field. But watch May, fakes the wide. Now as he climbs, he wants to throw it. But that little hesitation was he was letting down set the angle that he was going to take. Rather than just being a robot and throwing it because that's the design of the play, let the receiver set the angle so that you can hit him in the back of the end zone for a score. Ten point lead. Trying to push it to 11 Burnett. And the kick is good. Four. Touchdown. Pulling the right plays at the right time. We've seen some blitzes from Pitt, and you know how Carolina has attacked them is kind of just getting the ball in space. Good example of that is this. Look, they're faking this wide screen here. They want to get a reaction from these defenders. Now, what happens is Josh Downs just going to stock block and then get past, uh, you know, Howlett, and he does that. It's the little fake. But now you have to climb in the pocket, see the angle that's set. And, and so while it looks good on the board and on paper, the actual execution of it, there's a bit of a wrinkle to it. And that's down setting his angle. And May doing a nice job on the move and on the climb, being able to get him an accurate ball. Ball at the 25 for Slovis and Pitt, who now trail 11. There's a throw. Bartholomew couldn't hang on. Second down coming up. And if you think about the passing game so far for Pitt tonight, they've hit big plays. They've certainly been able to connect on those, but they've come off of hard run action, hard play action shots down the field. And now in this environment, down two scores, you know, that may not be as effective. A well, is still in the backfield. He is a receiving threat. Seven catches on the year coming in, but Pittsburgh needs scores here. Slovis wants to shoot one for Wayne, threw it behind him incomplete. Now third in the full ten. Cameron Kelly and also the 
grad linebacker Chris Collins were in coverage against Narduzzi's receiver. Yeah, and there's a couple of plays there on the first down, the throw behind Bartholomew, and that one on Wayne, who's coming through, just ball behind him once again. And Keaton Slovis now finds himself in a third and long, backed up on the student section, having to deal with some crowd noise. Pittsburgh 5 of 12 on third down. Release five in the pattern. Ball in the air and broken up. Geo Biggers. Ra Ra Dilworth in coverage. And Slovis, you know, throws that one into a lot of traffic. Starts to his right, but he's fortunate that this isn't picked off. I mean, you just look at it there. Got two defenders in the area, and Dilworth is underneath. Really fortunate. Wasn't able to come down with it. So Guess will try and see if he can flip the field on the Tar Heels, who scored touchdowns in their last three possessions. Running catch by Downs. 35-yard line before he is tackled on the play. Calendar made the stop that might have saved the touchdown, Kelsey. Guys, we always enjoy our visits with these coaches, and we got to talk to offensive coordinator Phil Longo about this offense and Drake May. He said there is nothing more important to Saturday's execution than preparing the quarterback. So each week he meets with every. together and they actually call the entire defense. I asked him what kind of growth he's seen in Drake May and he said the biggest growth is the speed of his answers, the authority with which he says things. He can tell that the confidence is building and he likes that because then he says they're not thinking about it. Once they're bored calling the plays, you know that they're just reacting on the field. They also actually go to lunch together. Phil Longo, Drake May and Corey Gaynor and then one offensive player of their choice gets to come each week too. Oh, okay. <laughs> First down, and that's Elijah Green for no game, maybe a loss. Servasi had done a Shane Simon on the top. Now, Tim, when you used to go to lunch, BC in the pros for years, maybe the offensive coordinator, the center always go to? The center gets invited a lot. Sure. It's going to happen. And so Corey Gaynor has been the, the beneficiary of some of those lunches. And look, I would say that probably anybody on this offense wants to spend a little more time with Rick May. Yeah. Second down, they did measure it back to the line of scrimmage, so the full 10 for Carolina. That's Downs in motion. May shoots it for Morales. Kamari Morales to catch it is ruled inbounds. The big tight end against the safety, Brandon Hill, inside the 15 at the 13. It's another great throw. It's a post-corner combination, and the corner breaks second, and that throw was a laser and Morales who really was never known as a, a pass catching tight end more of a blocker all of a sudden playing with Drake May is done a good job in the passing game 22 yards to the 13 May to the end zone Antoine Green touchdown Carolina I mean how easy does he make this look Wes I mean it I mean just you get one on one and I know there's talent at receiver for Carolina, but he makes it look easy, putting the ball exactly where he wants to put it, on the corner to Morales and then the back shoulder throw to Green. You can't do it better than that. And this conference has seen a lot of really good quarterbacks in recent years. And, you know, there was a lot of talk about Trevor Lawrence, and I think he was anointed as a first-round draft pick and maybe the number one overall pick when he was going to come out. Got news for you. This guy is going to have people talking about him that way as well. It is now 42-24. Markers down. We got a little post-kick skirmish. And everybody is sent to their respective corners, if you will. 42 to 24. It is 28 in a row, Tim. 
after they went five and out on a punt in their first possession of the second half. The next four possessions. Holding, kicking team, 10 yard penalty, retry. So they're going to go back to try the point after here. Carolina, in short, has scored four straight touchdowns. Three of them have come in a five minute span here in the fourth quarter. And Carolina just putting it on them, Wes. I mean, scored over 40. They have no answer for Drake May. And the last one was three plays, 35 yards in 73 seconds. He has thrown for five tonight, which gives him 29 on the year. The most passing touchdowns in a season by freshmen in ACC history. Jameis Winston threw for 40 in 2013. Sam Howell 38 in 2019. Lawrence 30 in 2018. And the point is good by Burnett. Listen, we showed a graphic earlier about Heisman candidates. This guy belongs in the discussion. Back shoulder throw to Antoine Green, and Phil Longo loves it. He should, as does Drake May. There are all kinds of products in this world. The Tar Heels here, Tim. Well, and Drake May, who Needs to get his celebration down because he's got to get used to throwing a lot of touchdowns, which he's done already, Wes, because there's some impressive, it's an impressive company that he's a part of because Todd Boyd was dominant and we obviously know Lamar Jackson was as well. Yep. No return for the Panthers. And a hill that was steep for Pat Narduzzi has gotten steeper. After another touchdown pass from May. And Tim, we said this at the top. This is the toughest and strongest defense arguably he has seen all year. Tonight. I mean, at every level, all three, right? I mean, it was Mac Brown knew it, Phil Longo knew yep. it. And and Wes, you know, it's not like he didn't get hit tonight. I mean, he, he got hit. Yeah. And but still responded well and really impressive. Here is Slovis. Pitt's got to put it up top. That ball got batted at the line and it hit the ground at the feet of Miles Murphy and that was Big Shaw now. 6'5 and a half, 355 pounds. The former Whirly from Grimsley High School in Greensboro. So it's second and ten. A Banacanda. Shaw tried to wrap him up. Instead, it's Gray, the junior from Charlotte, who will tackle Izzy Abanacanda after a two-yard gain. Third down and eight coming up. In a known passing situation. Keaton Slovis on the night. Just Know, under 50% in terms of completion percentage. And as I said before, Wes, a lot of those throws coming off of the hard play action, hitting Wayne down the middle, and you're just not going to get the defensive alignment to have something like that pop up again. Tight end three receivers for Slovis. Carolina bringing pressure. Slovis cuts it loose and a diving catch. Heck of a grab. Kanate Mumfield at the 40 and a first down. Now that is a great catch by Mumfield and he just lays out. It's a good job. I mean, it appears that he catches that. He kind of twists his body, kind of roll with the football, and that's a great grab. Yeah. 13 yards. Slovis with 227 tonight. But outside the Abanacanda touchdown in the early stages of the third, Pitt has been held scoreless. Slovis spins one for Wayne, shy of midfield, and Carolina rallies to the football. Duck was there, along with Biggers. 
sixth catch of the night for Jared Wayne from Peterborough, Ontario. He and uh, Haba Baldonado went to Clearwater International to play their high school ball. Baldonado from Italy, Wayne from north of the border in Florida. Second and short. Slovis fakes the throw. Wayne a catch in traffic with Duck hanging on him and a flag comes in. Biggers also involved on the tackle and Mumfield and Means say this one's on Carolina. Like there was some some yelling for some targeting coming from the pit sideline and. An eligible receiver downfield offense number 55. Five yard penalty. Down. You know, it was a bit of an RPO. Not a bit of an RPO, it was an RPO. And it kind of took a second to develop. And when that happens, linemen are going to end up finding their way down the field. 56 year old Pat Narduzzi, the son of a coach. His late father, Bill, coached at Youngstown State and influenced the young linebacker into the business. Of course, came over after working with Mark D'Antonio and the Michigan State defense. Running that package to success in the Big Ten. Slovis on third down, Wayne to catch, and he got hit immediately by Boykins. And you know, in this, this situation, you're trying to claw back. West, a lot of stuff underneath. Yeah. And if you want to, you know, kind of find your way back into this football game, I do think you need to start trying to attack down the field a little bit more. Third down and three. Pitt might be two down territory ahead of six minutes, too, by the way. Play fake. Mumfield. Duck. Drilled him. And that's a loss on the play. And Kanate Mumfield felt the full power of Storm Duck. Loss of three. Yeah, and here's Storm Duck right here. He just reads it. They're trying to throw a little bubble inside, and Bub Means has got to go try to block him. Either here or Bartholomew, neither one of them do. They're pointing at each other like, hey, you got him, I got him. But Storm Duck says, oh, I'm going to play in the backfield and make this tackle. Now, I feel like this is a bit of a, you know, you think about some of the struggles this Carolina defense has had, Wes. Yeah. The performance tonight has been pretty good. You think about some of the big plays they gave up to, to Wayne. You know, we're busting coverage as you look at Gene Chisk, who has really been a calming presence for this defense as they've kind of struggled in the early part of the season. He didn't panic. I think the players saw that, and I think they're probably playing their best football of the season right now, which is what he wanted to see. And he's driving home a point here because nothing would please Gene Chiswick more than to see his team finish this game like this, right? You mean you're you're talking about a team where we were discussing this kind of midweek. They've got to put stack days is a term that gets used a lot. Well, they got to stack quarters, right? Stack possessions. Well, in second half, outside of the touchdown drive, Tim, to start the second half, it's six plays a punt, five plays a turnover, three plays a punt, and here they're looking at six plays and a punt. Listen, Pitt's done nothing offensively, and. I think that's a surprise. I think we thought we'd see the second half. A right. lot of Abana Kanda and I mentioned earlier, Slovis under 50% completion percentage on the night. And I think defensively, the Tar Heels have answered the call. Fourth and six. Pitt, after a timeout, goes for it. Slovis for Wayne, caught it and didn't hang on through the catch. Duck raked it out of there. So back to back plays by Storm Duck. And Carolina will get it in plus territory on downs with less than five and a half to go. And look, just a piggyback on it. I mean, Pat Narduzzi said his quarterback was playing excellent in the first half. And it's been a struggle to get first downs in the second half. And they haven't been able to run it. They haven't been able to throw it. And I think Gene Chizik definitely has got to be thrilled with, as you say, Wes, stacking quarters, stacking plays. and. I think this entire team has 
stacked a pretty good half together. Yep. And back comes May with 384 yards and five touchdowns. And Drake will dive to pick up about four to the 40. And you know, how about this Wake offensive line as well? Is let me just look at the efficiency. The ball has not touched the ground much tonight for, for Drake May. And I think we need to give some credit to this offensive line. I yeah. mean, it's a, I mean, how many times have we seen plays like what just happened there? It's a design pass on first down. He doesn't like what he sees downfield. And then as he takes off, he doesn't get caught behind yeah. the line of scrimmage, falls forward for four yards. And, you know, now you're staying on schedule. A little morning questions earlier in the day about maybe the quality of the offensive line. These guys have played great tonight. For Phil Longo, here's Downs. And that'll leave Carolina a couple of yards shy on third down. But we knew that in order to be successful, Carolina would have to be in this gear tonight, right, Tim? Oh, we the knew they would, would be. Yeah. Could they, right? Well, I think the question was, all right, we know they've got all this perimeter talent, but how will that guy, Drake May, handle the pressure? How will the guys up front handle the physical nature, the aggressive nature that you'll face facing a pit defense? And the answer is they've already hung 42 on them, Wes. Yeah. And now third down and two. Play clock winding down. May going to take the snap. And here goes Hampton. And he will have the first down rolling toward the 32. Alexander the stop for the Panthers. And how about plays like that? I mean, you're, you're kind of four minute offense mode. You know, I think sometimes this can just get looked at as a finesse offense. But here you are in four minute offense. You're trying to run out the clock. Your starting tailback, who's 225 pounds, is not available to you because he left the game with a shoulder injury. So you just put in a 220 pound freshman running back to have the physical finishing run in a four minute drive. Yep. Amari and Hampton. From Clayton, North Carolina, who had 36 yards and a touchdown at Miami. May going to get it snapped with one on the play clock. And here goes Hampton again. And he is leaning toward the 26, maybe the 25. Bangali Kamara, the stop. There's you think about this defense. You know, we were talking about it, just making plays. Just. In the first half gave up some big ones to the post, but in the second half, being aggressive flying around. And you look at Cedric Gray, nine tackles on the night. You think about doing that with Noah Taylor leaving the game right. with an injury. And that's a really impressive performance by Gene Chizik's group. Yep. May again going to wind this play clock all the way down. And Pitt brought the house, and Hampton taken down by Dennis. And before we get to the next down, the ACC's Committee for Racial and Social Justice, in conjunction with its member institutions, have identified this past week as ACC Unity Week as part of the initiative. Members of the Pitt and Carolina football teams met on the field before the ball game to demonstrate their commitment to seeing each other as equals and treating each other with respect and dignity at all times and recognizing that our differences don't divide us but make us stronger and you've seen it not only in football but all the other fall sports taking place in the ACC and there's some championships being staged as well in the conference calendar and nice to see that also as part of ACC Unity Week. Well Carolina on the way to winning their fourth straight to go to seven and one and four and zero, oh. high noon next Saturday at Charlottesville against the Virginia team that played one of the weirder games in college football this year today. They certainly did. Just look at this schedule. Obviously at Virginia and their chance to win. Wake Forest. I mean, I, I think. Look, Wake is better than they showed today, but makes you wonder now. And then Georgia Tech and NC State. And I know we're excited about, you know, MJ Morris's debut, but. I would classify that as a favorable schedule, Wes. Yeah. Here's May. 
Trying to step away, does from Baldonado. He's got the first down. He will slide toward the 12 yard line. They'll mark him to the 13. And the crowd <laughs> applauds here because number 10 did not leave the ground. There's so much good about that if you're a Carolina fan because Drake May obviously shows great escape ability, but then the decision to get down which is something that Mac Brown has been talking about. He basically has said it's selfish for you not to do it. And then look at Corey Gaynor, the center, all fired up as Drake May and his group realize that they have just iced this one. Yep, victory formation for the Tar Heels. And May will touch a knee and the clock rolls. And the crowd here chanting, Drake for Heisman. <laughs> well, 449 yards of total offense tonight for Drake May. And you know something? What's also impressive, get the ball back with 525 left in the game and don't give it back. I mean, yep. that, that is an, that's an offense dominating a defense when you can do that. Yep. That's outside of the four-minute offense. Well, another terrific effort by the Tar Heel quarterback, and Carolina's going to get not only their fourth win in the league, Tim, all four have been in the Coastal. And here at the end, Baldonado a little frustrated on the victory formation, and that'll do it. Mac Brown and Pat Narduzzi, a handshake. Carolina remains un. Defeated at home against Pitt. Now 7 0 at Keenan Stadium. The Tar Heels win for the 11th time in 16 meetings against the Panthers. Some kind of performance by Drake May.